What's up, folks? Jeff here, and welcome back to Mad Hatter's Reef. And if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that we upload a new video. Now, in today's video, I wanted to take a look at the top five hitchhikers that you could expect to get when you are purchasing live rock now when most folks are starting off in this hobby one of the very first things that you do is purchase some live rock and it's pretty fun and i remember very vividly just looking at an empty tank filled with rock and just watching all the little critters that were coming out of the rock uh, when i first started a lot of the rock that i was using was in fact live rock from the ocean nowadays we have a new option we actually have a lot of man-made rock such like this piece right here that almost looks as good as the real thing and actually even in some cases looks better. But that's not the subject for today's video. We're going to be taking a look at the five most common hitchhikers that you can get on Live Rock. Coming in at number five on our top five most common hitchhikers that you can find on Live Rock. That's a mouthful is copepods. Copepods are a beneficial critter that can be introduced to your reef tank. In most cases, when you're first starting out in the hobby via live rock, you can also get them from frag plugs, or you can just go out and buy some and add them to your reef tank that way as well. Now, having a healthy pod population in your reef tank is actually a good sign of a well-established and healthy reef tank, which for most folks, that's what we're trying to achieve. And having a good pod population in your tank is definitely a good food source for some of the more picky feeders out there, such as the green mandarin. This is one of the most beautiful saltwater fish in the hobby. And if you don't have a healthy pod population, this fish is not going to thrive and live a very long, happy life. So it's incredibly important to make sure that your tank does become established with copepods and adding live rock to your tank is one of the best ways to go and start that pod population in your reef tank. One of my first interactions with a pod was actually when I was dipping corals and noticed this very large, I guess I say large, but it wasn't that big. It was probably the size of a pencil eraser and it's crawling around on the bottom of the container, not doing so well because I was actually dipping the coral. And I ended up grabbing an X-Acto knife and killing it because I thought it was a mantis shrimp, which these guys can grow pretty large and take over a tank. And for some folks that don't want to keep one as a pet, it's not really an ideal candidate to add to a reef tank. But that wasn't the case. It was actually an amphipod and I killed it. Could have had some free copepods to add to my tank. Uh, being one of the best food sources out there, but he didn't make it to the tank. So if you end up getting some copepods from your live rock, you see these little critters crawling around on the glass. Sometimes they stay on the bottom like three inches of the glass. If you have a really dense population, you'll see them all over the tank. They're nothing to worry about. They're a great addition to a reef tank and actually something that you want to have in your tank. And as far as live rock hitchhikers go, these guys are awesome. Coming in at number four on the most common live rock hitchhikers is snails. Not any one in particular, just them as a whole. And I've gotten a number of different snails over the years. And in many cases, it's like getting free stuff. It's a free snail that you didn't have to pay for because in a lot of cases, you are buying snails for your reef tank. And most of them are beneficial, but not all of them. Some of the not so beneficial snails that you can get is this guy right here. This is the sundial snail and they have a appetite for zoanthids. In a lot of cases, they are incredibly small like this one that you see right here. That's in a palm of a hand, but they will chew chomp your zoanthids. And being that some of the zoanthids out there are incredibly expensive, nobody really wants to buy a coral just so it can get chewed up by some hitchhiker that ended up in your tank by chance. So if you see these guys in your tank, you want to make sure that you're taking them out and removing them actively. A lot of times they'll lay eggs around zoanthids, but definitely something that you do not want to have in your reef tank, especially if you have zoanthids. Another hitchhiker that could enter into your tank is the pyramid snail, which in a lot of cases, they're actually not the big snail that you see here. They're the little grains of rice looking dudes that are around the foot of the snail. 
These guys are bad. They are going to eat other snails. They also will have a taste for clams. So if you have snails and clams in your tank, this is definitely a guy that you want to keep your eye out for. In a lot of cases, you can remove them by just physically pulling out the clam or the snail and brushing these guys off. In the last episode of Saltwater Aquarium Radio, I actually talked about dealing with pyramid snails and how to overcome them. So if you want to check out my podcast, there is a link in the description below. One of my most favorite hitchhikers that I have ever gotten is a keyhole limpet snail. And I didn't buy him. He just came in on some live rock that I had purchased. And it took me about two months to figure out what he was. He was all black and encased, which kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop, but he was absolutely amazing looking. He looked almost like venom crawling around in my reef tank and did an amazing job of removing algae off the glass, off the rocks. He was a workhorse when it came to the cleanup crew. Sadly, he didn't make it through the transition from the 55 gallon to the 90, but he was definitely one of my most favorite hitchhikers that I have ever had. Coming in at number three on our five most common hitchhikers on Live Rock is crabs. Not just hermit crabs, but crabs in general. Uh, they are, when you get one of the good ones, a very pleasant surprise. Now, there's been quite a few times over the years where I've bought a piece of Live Rock and I've gotten a blue-legged hermit crab or a red-legged hermit crab, and I've even gotten this crazy guy, which I still have no idea what type of hermit crab this is. But if anybody knows, please leave a comment down below. Help me out with the idea on that guy. And I've also gotten emerald crabs, which that's an absolute score because these guys go from anywhere from 5 to $10 a piece. And that is just going to add to the overall savings and cleanup crew of your reef tank. But there is some bad crabs out there and probably one of the most feared crabs that you can get as a hitchhiker on live rock is the gorilla crab like we see right here now if you ever have a critter that you can just not identify jump over to me loves reefs critter id section he has a huge database of different critters that you could potentially find in your reef tank i'll put a link to it in the description below if you want to check that out or if you ever need it it's a very helpful resource but as far as crabs are concerned with being a live rock hitchhiker, uh, some are good, some are bad. It's just really important to be able to identify which one you have and whether or not you need to remove it from your reef tank. Coming in at number two on our top five most common hitchhikers is sponges. Now, sponges are some of my most favorite hitchhikers that you potentially could get on your live rock. And not going out and needing to buy one is definitely a plus, even though that I have bought even sponges such as this white sponge that you see here from my local reef shop before. Now, the reason that I did that is because sponges use silicates from the water to actually form their body structure, very similar as to red slime does. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what red slime is, it's this like red gooey slime that just grows over everything it's actually a form of bacteria but it uses silicates to form and if you are battling red slime you probably have a silicate issue and if you want to counter that silicate issue you can have sponges in your reef tank and that actually is going to outcompete the red slime for those silicates there's folks out there that when they buy decorative sponges such as this red ball sponge they actually add silicates to their reef tank so just think of that the next time that you're having some huge bout with red slime can't figure out how to get the silicates out of your tank just know that there's some hobbyist out there looking to add silicates to his for his sponges a common hitchhiker that you will see in your tank from your live rock is the pineapple sponge, which some folks absolutely hate these guys. They've never really bothered me. The only thing that I've ever worried about with them is the overgrowth within the plumbing. I don't really want them to grow so much to the point where uh, they are clogging the plumbing. That'd be a pretty big concern for me. But for the most part, they're harmless. They're not going to do anything. They're actually going to soak up a little bit of silicate that's in your water. And it's just a little thing. If it, if it bothers you, you can remove them. The important thing is that if sponges die in your tank, it can follow up your tank pretty bad. So it's very important to make sure that if you do have a sponge that dies in your tank, that you're doing a good amount of water changes to get all of whatever it's going to release into the water out of the water. 
Coming in at number one on the top five most common hitchhikers on your live rock is the dreaded Aptasia anemone. Now, the big deal with these guys is, one, they can grow like wildfire in your tank, especially if you feed your tank a lot. And they also can do their fair bit of damage to your corals and invertebrates. I've actually lost a cleaner shrimp due to a large Aptasia anemone that I just kind of let exist for a little too long. And I added a shrimp to the tank. He kind of freaked out when I added him to the tank, swam around, and then landed backwards into an anemone and actually died instantly. It was pretty horrible considering that I paid close to $25 for that shrimp. But there are a few ways that you can battle these guys naturally. One being Bergia nudibranch. Uh, these guys will go around and consume all the Aptasia in your tank and you can make a fair bit of money uh, by culturing these guys as well. There's some folks that actually go out and culture Aptasia just for the purpose of growing and culturing these nudibranchs. The one thing I would be concerned is if you have any wrasses in your tank, uh, they're probably going to go and have themselves a feast. So that's probably not going to be a good candidate for a natural remedy if you have wrasses in your tank already. Another way that you can battle Aptasia is with Aptasia eating file fish. The main thing that you need to be concerned with with this fish is they are incredibly docile. So you don't want to put them in a tank where there is a semi-aggressive fish such as a six-line wrasse, which we just showed you. Because uh, he's probably most likely going to bully this guy. And if he doesn't live a long, happy life, it's not going to do anything for your Aptasia issue. But if the natural process isn't a option for you, there's always supplements that are out on the market that can help you with your Aptasia issues. And I've used a couple of them, and most of them work pretty well as far as removing Aptasia. There's just a few directions that you need to follow, and it's relatively easy. It takes about 24 hours and then they are gone. All right, folks, that's going to do it for our look at the five most common Live Rock hitchhikers. If you want to learn more about Live Rock, check this video out. I'll see you over there.